Well, the world's biggest investor in distressed debt is taking a page from its competitors. We're talking about Oak Tree Capital, taking a cue from Blackstone and KKR and filing for an IPO. Christina Alessia in our deals desk has more for us. Also with me is James Hoover. He's known Oak Tree founder Mar Howard Marks for more than 30 years and also is invested in the company both personally and professionally as the CIO of Elizabethtown College. But Christina, I want to start with you because uh, why are they filing for an IPO now? Well, they're certainly taking advantage of the uh, window in the IPO market, but at the end of the day, all of these IPOs are about succession and addressing those issues. Clearly, the founders of Oak Tree, um, Howard Marks and Bruce Karsh, have about 16% of the firm each. Mm -hmm. So. The, the ownership is somewhat broadly distributed amongst the investors, mm. but there's still an element here of cashing out. So they're going to do so in the IPO market, and that's a way to get there, you know, in the most lucrative way possible. So cashing out. Now, how is this different from KKR and Blackstone? Well, I mean, it's it's the same as KKR and Blackstone, but they, Oak Tree is positioning itself slightly different because it's saying that it's not, it doesn't depend on leverage to generate mm. returns, and it doesn't depend on the IPO market for exits. So it's saying that those other guys are market timers. We're the true value investors, and that's for investors to really determine. Buy low, sell high, basically. Uh, let, Christina, just hang on. I want to bring in Jim now, who, as I mentioned, is invested both personally and professionally in Oak Tree. Uh, what do you make of this pending IPO? Well, it's not a surprise uh, because uh, they did attempt to go public in a quasi fashion with this uh, recent Goldman exchange a few years ago. Uh, fortunately, that did, really didn't provide the liquidity or trading volume that they sought, and I think disappointed with that exchange, decided they should go public in a more traditional sense uh, through an IPO. In terms of timing, uh, I don't think there's anything internal within the organization that chose this particular moment to pursue the IPO, but rather taking advantage of the improved equity markets uh, as well as the IPO window, uh, which is open. Uh, there's an old adage in Wall Street, you feed the ducks when they're quacking, and I think the time is right for this kind of organization to try to go public. Now, you know Howard Marks. You've known him for over 30 years. How is yes. this going to change things for him? Well, it puts him more into the public spotlight. Uh, I think one of the challenges of going public is the fact that you now have a new constituency that you must serve. I mean, heretofore, he has served the employees and management of the company, and he's served very successfully the fund investors in, in Oak Tree. He'll now have a new third constituency, which are these public shareholders, and their interests are different than the fund investor interests. Right. So, actually, on that point of conflict of interest, I had a quick question about the Howard and his principals and his fellow principals, I guess traditionally they've seeded new funds with capital from their own pockets. And when these firms go public, they can now raise money in the public market to fund th what would have been their commitments. Does that present a conflict for investors at all? No, I don't think so. In fact, they may use the corporate capital, if you will, to seed these new investors. That may be one of the growth strategies. In fact, to me, that's the most interesting aspect out of this whole transaction. It's not the IPO itself, but what do they articulate as their growth strategy? I mean, after all, there's a limit to how large one can be solely focused on the high yield and distressed debt markets, which have been their mainstay. Mm. Now, they're going to need to have to diversify their asset base if they want to grow the revenues and earnings, which the public shareholders are going to demand. And in seeding new firms, the lending business, right? right they, and providing yeah. capital in that way, back office resources, et cetera, may be one of their avenues of growth uh, for the business going forward. Uh, now, you can compare this to Apollo, right? Apollo went public back in March, and I was taking a look at their stock chart. Uh, the stock is down 16% from that IPO. Uh, is that a worry for you? Not necessarily. I, I should say I'm not an investor in any of the Apollo funds, and I'm not an Apollo shareholder, so I don't know that business well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, in general, one should carefully look at the different businesses. And one metric that would be interesting to me is to see the mix of assets and revenues derived between long-term partnership capital, uh, which uh, Oak Tree has a number of 10-year partnerships where the capital is locked up for 10 years, and capital in funds of a shorter duration in terms of liquidity, the right to withdraw, et cetera. Obviously, to the extent you have a business with more of its capital tied up on 10-year terms, the more predictability of revenues there are for the public shareholders. So that'd be one metric I'd want to compare aligned, the two. The more aligned the, the management interest. is then right. with the firm. Okay. And it is a concern among uh, uh, public investors in terms of what's the mix between how much you get in terms of incentive fees, how much the, the actual firm is generating in terms of incentive fees, and how much it's uh, generating in terms of management fees. And to Jim's point, the, the management fee is what 
uh, most attracts most public investors. Mm -hmm. So the incentive there is to gather as many assets as possible so you can get those management fees. Now, private investors such as yourself question that for go ahead. Therein is the conflict. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're serving two different constituencies with two different right. interests. The fund investors are solely interested in fund performance, period, end of story. The public shareholders, they want the business to grow. They need higher revenues, they need higher earnings in order to achieve a higher valuation for the stock they have bought. Now those two objectives aren't necessarily common. Uh, to achieve higher revenues and earnings, you're going to have to grow the assets of the business and you're going to have to perform well. I mean, the two go hand in glove. But the fund investor could care less about the overall assets of the firm. He's most interested in the performance of the particular fund he's invested in. And that can lead to conflicts with respect to how you run the business. Then, Jim, what are you going to do with your holdings in an oak tree? Well, uh, I would say that I'm on the fence in that uh, I would have preferred they would have remained private uh, to avoid these potential conflicts. Having said that, that's not to say you can't successfully manage those conflicts. And I think Howard, given his stature and reputation, will do his utmost to be sure that those are properly balanced. And so I'm on the fence in terms of just seeing over time how they balance those two different constituencies' interests. Okay. Jim, thank you very much. Really appreciate you stopping you. by on this. Jim Pleasure Hoover and here. also to Christina Aleshi.